Seymour Fest 2019, June 29th, DBA 256 in Pomona, California, with Siamese. Speak on how we live. Hope. Walking through his neighborhood looking for some in the proof. Anonymous. Yeah, hot too. Why you don't it out of board, Ben? Burners. Hey, Average Joe and the bench warmers. Run down creeps. The fallen electric. Listen, here's the story. From Zero to Hero if you would it all the way. And Wolves Inside Free entry 21 and over Go to FooBarShow.com Filthy Martini Studios in Ontario, California. It's the Fubar Show. Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Chelsea. I'm Josh. Thank y'all very much for listening to the Fubar Show. Thank you for downloading the pod on your favorite podcast app, subscribing, and telling a friend like a tramp. You can always reach us at Fubar Show. That's F the Below Bar Show dot com, and F the Below Bar Show is our handle on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram. Check us out. Drop us a line and we'll fill it up like a couple of foos. Ain't that right, foos? Seafood. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, special guests on today. We have Wolves Inside. Say what's up, guys. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Thanks for having us. Yeah, dude, absolutely. Introduce yourselves and let us uh, know what you play. Uh, so I am Nuncio. I'm the lead singer, only singer, basically, mm -hmm. um, of the band. You and play the vocals? I play the vocals. <laughs> <laughs> Just go out sometimes. You got to tune them up, but hey. Get the job done. Right on. Carries the drums. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Damien. Uh, play guitar. Pretty much program the songs and stuff like that. So, so you do the production for it. Yeah, pretty much. Right on. So uh, we're going to feature a couple of your guys' tracks later on in the episode. And I understand that everything uh, went down in-house. You guys did the whole recording and everything. Yeah, we try to keep it in-house. I mean, well, mainly things we do is record in, you know, in his studio, in his house. Mm -hmm. And... We do sometimes send it out to get mixed or mastered okay. a bit, a little bit, a little bit more professional help. Mm -hmm. um, but as we grow, we're going to be able to do it in all in house. We're kind of DIYs yeah. as yeah, much as we can. You know, new age like do it yourself, YouTube tutorials and stuff like that. You don't necessarily need to go to school kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So, um, little background: been doing it for since like 12, 14, whatever fucking recording and shit. Mm -hmm. But like uh, you know, you get like a little demo programs and stuff like that. So um, I finally was able to get a house and did a little recording studio. So um, yeah, I met this fucker, bought a mic, and the rest is history. So, <laughs> so I, it's usually how things go down. Similar yeah. to our origin, foo. Yeah. yeah, met these fuckers, bought a few mics, and uh, <laughs> here we are, yeah, 117 here we episodes later. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, how did uh, how did you guys meet each other? Like, how did that start? We had two two uh, our own projects. He had uh, his Nuncio, uh -huh. and what he goes by on on SoundCloud, and then I had uh, this project called uh, Phantom Blooms, also on SoundCloud. So. But I, I put an ad on Craigslist. I saw his. I think. Did you reach out to me first? I, I think I put an ad out and you reached out to me. Yeah. So yeah. I basically hit him up and um. So he Casual already had a, he had a yeah because I think he had his <laughs> he had a, his little thing in Rancho like a studio thing and then um he had his own production thing going on and doing multiple artists and it's cool. So we met. He had his own drummer and he wanted to do some um. Uh, some low, like low key, like um, like rock and roll, bluesy type of like low low feel. Long story short, we met at. Uh, I told him to meet him up at Boston's, which is by my pad. It's kind of it's kind of weird inviting people to your house nowadays. So yeah, especially on Craigslist, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, be careful. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, uh, it's gonna be an axe murder, Fucking please, Craigslist please. killer and shit. Yeah, dude. <laughs> so um, yeah, dude, just had some beers and um, we're wrapping it up about music and what the fuck we wanted to do and. I liked his voice and the shit that I was playing was a little harder, but I was willing to compromise. And they came back to my pad and they saw the studio. They saw they saw that I was legit, and, and so that's kind of what where it all started. So how long has it been since you guys were like over over a, a year now? Yeah, I think yeah. yeah, early late April. It's been a year, yeah, over a year. Yeah, it's been yeah, over a year, a year. Yeah. little over a year. 
Yeah, I think uh, I was there, Nuncio, when uh, when you were still like creating the uh, the artwork for the band, like the logo and everything. Yeah, yeah. You were asking me, he's like, "This look good with the skull." <laughs> I kind of want to put a skull there. Yeah, what kind of skull mo- should I use? <laughs> <laughs> a wolf, right? Right. Does that make sense? <laughs> Wolves wolf. inside, so a wolf. Mm, I, I a just wolf didn't want to use a typical like wolf silhouette or just like use. I wanted to. It's like we're the, moving into the like, Family Guy episode. Uh, he's like, "I want a pistol." Now we'll do a nice Kermit the Frog. Yeah. <laughs> no, I want a skull. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna put a nice no, Kermit. Like, <laughs> All I know is you know, <laughs> <laughs> Cookie yeah. Monster. So, just put Cookie Monster in your game. Oh, yeah. I know, right? So basically, <laughs> we, had a sh- we had a show, uh, Cinco de yeah. Mayo, and my brother in law was like, oh, fucking just pay our, our, we'll get a shit face wasted and just play. So, um, we As had you a, do? Yeah, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, we kind of keep it chill. But um, so we had to come up with a name, and it's something that stuck out. There was different like uh, versions of it. And, and so we just. What were f- some of those versions? Like Three Little Pigs? Uh, <laughs> yeah. What the? What was it? <laughs> I, don't know, I wanted Black I think, Mountain at one point. Black Mountain. Yeah. yeah. All right. Too. Why's Mountain got to be black? <laughs> okay, that's where that's actually where I wrote my first uh, EP. Okay. Yeah. Black Mountains uh, by Beaumont in between Morongo mm-hmm. and Beaumont. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think I liked uh, Devour the Sun. That was pretty cool. But there was like an album from some like metal band, so I didn't want to jack their shit. But um, no, nah, I just just fucking we had to go with something. That's something we went with and it just kind of stuck. So right, right. Yeah. stop picking names, like, little girls, and, and let's uh, just pick one. Just fucking play <laughs> whatever. I mean, it's the music. All, like you know, you got bands like what the fuck like Corn like you know they with the K yeah. and stuff like that. It's yeah, like, and the backwards uh, are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's just, like <laughs> random ass shit. So like I think it's the music that really fucking will get the get the band. Yeah, going. absolutely. So tell us a little bit about the music. It's what are you guys' uh, influences? What are you really trying to Let him go, go first on that one? With that, uh, I mean, influences. Influences, uh, just just keep it like uh, Deftones. That's, that's a big influence of mine. Oh yeah, uh, you can definitely hear it. Yeah. Um, earlier, like I was like a metal like kid high school in high school and shit. Mm-hmm. Like I carried around on mariachi guitar trying to <laughs> fucking pop beat on that shit. But um, <laughs> um, you know, just definitely like metal. And then I kind of cooled out and I got a cool like in college just became like a cool kid and play like uh like block party like indie fucking shit but, okay uh, yeah. and then um after i you know college and just said i just want to play what i want to play and which is a lot of high energy music and fucking just raw just raw and yeah just not too metal but just you know i grew up with you know that kind of shit i guess it's- i know I, I gotta say you know just based on the uh the song that i've heard the single that we're going to premiere later on in the episode uh, there's there's a heavy deftones and tool influence involved yeah. Um, Nuncio, is that like where you're drawing your influence in terms of vocals? Um, at first, no. I mean, mm-hmm. it was just kind of like just I was for the longest time. I've just been trying to figure out what what my voice kind of formats and fits. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like my natural voice, I guess, more yeah. natural, right? Because if I I was more inclined to kind of like do things that are like manipulate my voice to find a certain sound. For the longest time, it's just been a journey of what my voice is. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then it's just kind of like. It, it just lands to like, you know what? I'm not gonna do anything different. I'm just gonna just like yeah, just do be it, you, right? Yeah, be me, and then mm-hmm. and then it kind of like he's the one that actually introduced me to Tool in in the Perfect Circle. And yeah, all oh yeah, so like, kind of different. I never knew yeah. about metal. Like I never listened to metal music before mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. So my You're a big fan of the Chili Peppers. Big fan of Chili Peppers. Yeah. yeah, big fan of Chili Peppers. So then you know my background is Chili Peppers, alternative rock, and. Things like that, yeah. Nineties right. grunge, right. probably the closest thing to metal was going to be um, Alice in Chains. Okay, okay, yeah. That's yeah. the metaliest Before, grunge yeah. band yeah. out there. Yeah, I guess, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if anything. Yeah, yeah, so that yeah. was probably the closest it was going to so, be. So yeah, it was kind of weird when we got together because it's totally polar opposites. You know what I mean? Like nineties or like his voice, uh, it, it fits. It makes it makes us our sound. I, you know what I mean? So it's just it challenges me every day. Which, but his voice is fucking like it doesn't sound like any other cookie cutter or like a, a, another band and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So it's a great day to come like well, not to work every day, but fuck it, we do it. We do it on the side. But you know, this is our main thing. This is our baby. You know, we've been jamming and just coming up. Flu- I show him bands. He shows me bands. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. So he fell in love with Tool, and yeah, it's fucking that, cool. That How can you not? No. Yeah, I know. These guys are <laughs> fucking great, dude. Yeah, these are legends. They moved to my second favorite band, and 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 he makes a good wine. Have you yeah, ever yeah. Had a Maynard's I, we, wine. He, he showed me the documentary. Yeah, on Revolver. I never had it. Yeah, but. yeah. It's 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 delicious. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cool, dude. Other than the show that we're having on Saturday, uh, Food yes. Bar Fest 2019, DBA 256 in Pomona, California. What else should we be looking forward to? Any other like any actual releases, shows? Mm. Kind of just uh, fill well, us in with that. You're gonna listen to Goddess for the first time. Mm-hmm. You will have to wait for that single. 
but we are working on something as you know as we go on to hopefully by yeah, by think, fall or something yeah like that, right? i think we have a couple more shows like in the summertime just because it's summer and you want to have fun and kick you know take off your shoes and have a fucking good time but yeah, uh, yeah. basically uh we're gonna go back to not like hiatus but just um i think advantage of the studio time that we have in the summer and um like it's it's kind of weird with us because we just refresh it's our year we're trying to find ourselves find our voice find you know find our tone and so a lot of these songs are going to be rough and coming out but it's 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 nice because it's natural and it's it's what we want and then once we find that and and explore more uh, i think we're going to kick back and just uh, we're going to put together a, a five song seven song ep yeah, for the fall release, but um, we want to take advantage of the story time. We're just gonna just chill and just write songs, dude. Yeah, because you have like bands that are like seven years in the making. Yeah, you know, and then we're, we're the guys a, that like, are just no like met on Craigslist like yeah. a year ago, you know, and so, yeah, yeah, still we, figuring. We it out. We just found out formula yeah. what works and with our scheduling and um, like you guys mic placements and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Just figuring what works in in your time and we got the formula down and what works and yeah, you know, I pump out it. songs. Like, there's so many songs that we have like like uh instrumentally and it's like fucking crazy the level to the rap but i don't know if you guys have seen it this way but in my experience uh, people aren't really looking for something different per se mm-hmm. but i think mm-hmm. something that's real and yeah. it's coming from a real place yeah. i think yeah. that's what's really gets people going and i believe that wholeheartedly yeah. oh yeah i believe it. yeah i see it all the time you go to shows and like people work their fucking ass off and they last thing they want to do is you know they want to kick back and relax and it's it's i think that's what i try to do um he's more like just chill like low low temples i'm more like well, let's fucking rage and fucking push it to a hundred, you know, to eleven. And yeah. See, yeah. people just want to have a good time, have some beer, and fucking get drunk, and they want to yeah. fucking see a show. And yeah. we we kind of found a good balance with that. that I yeah. think yeah, yeah. We found a good balance of when weed and speed. Combined. Weed and speed. <laughs> <laughs> you get wolves inside. You get, you get confused. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, they're hard buckles to a fucking show. They just want to see some fucking yeah, people I hear that, man. crazy. Well, I can I can speak to that. Uh, I mean, uh, being in a band that um, you know we cut our teeth playing you know three four hour shows, which uh, the majority of them, maybe three quarters of the entire set is cover cover songs. Yeah. So we choose different types of cover songs to play, and that mm-hmm. kind of it. It, it somehow influences what the new track is going to sound like, more or less, because we're drawing these experiences and influences from the other bands that right. we love and we play in front of people, and that's how we test our vocal range or at least our, our right. range when it comes to the instrumentals and that kind of thing. Is that more or less what you guys are more going towards, or how how are you? Because you said you're kind of trying to come into you know this one tight knit group that right. is Wolves Inside Sound. How are you guys trying to find that sound? Well, being that that me and Damien here are the main writers to write uh-huh. the music you know um sometimes you know with this particular um song uh, goddess i'm the one that came up with the kind of like the basic structure of it and mm-hmm. like the songwriting and where are the points where he would come up with the, yeah. ma- the main ideas and and i would come in there and lay the lyrics and you know and the yeah, vocals he'll, he'll come up like with that. ideas or text yeah. me like fucking shit and say can you play this yeah, <laughs> my phone. Like, with my phone, yeah, I would yeah. mouth. I would yeah, mouth yeah. the guitar so, parts. I mean, like I, like like I said, it, I don't it, know how to play shit. It's so. weird. Like you meet, <laughs> you meet people and like how they're trying to express themselves and like uh, in and he's giving me ideas and I'm all right. Are you sure you want to like that, dude? And just trying to figure out what works and not. Um, but he's he's good at yeah. Like, Trying no to find, to I'm trying to find yeah the focal point. So with the, with the covers, they're they're great. Like with the covers we pick, they right. they're, they range from diversity because. When people come to shows, they want something that's uh, they have something rapport, something in mm-hmm. common. So when you do a cover, it's like fuck, I know that song. Like you know what I mean? Oh, they did a good cover, yeah. or that full sounds like shit. They they shouldn't cover that, or whatever. <laughs> uh, but either way, oh, it's it's truth. People come and yeah. they judge you on the way you sound, and yeah. and basically we pick covers that are suited to his voice and stuff like that. But these are just like um, this bookmarks or like little like, uh, just to keep us going until we have the full catalog or or just uh, started. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. it's yeah. been a it's been kind of hard. Um, just the first year meeting people, what what is he like? What is he into? And just figuring total like opposites, man. Mm-hmm. Like you know, yeah. personalities and stuff yeah. like that. And so when you meet people, it's like you, yeah, you have chemistry. It just like everyone likes different shit sometimes, and just you just need to fucking cater to everyone's liking and stuff like that in the band. Then we added Ryan in the band and Dan, and we'll get to them later. They're uh, great additions to the band. Every day is a fucking new day. You know, it just yeah. changes it. Yeah. There's, there's been a slight lineup change, no, in, the, in recent months. Yeah. yeah. Well, when 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 I came on on board with my drummer, um, the kids 21 years old, mm-hmm. and you know we, we at the time we were just kind of formulating. You know, when you when you try to figure out 
like what works, what doesn't work, and uh, what style we want to go to, and things like that. Sometimes you have um, creative differences, and that's, yeah, that's okay. People have their priorities and shit. You know? and he was right. fairly young, and he wanted to skate and do EDM music, so we're like, well, oh, right. fucking more power do to you, you man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so, so they didn't want to hold him back. So hey, you know what? Yeah. Figure figure out us as a band, so we're not solidified in anything. So right. trace your dreams. Yeah. You know? Right, right, right on. Uh, so what's the, the best place where people can find you, like on your socials or anything like that? On Instagram, we are Wolves Inside, and we even have a website. It's wolvesinside.com. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So once we release the, the music, I think we're going to do like a structural package and then have everything on, on um, all content and stuff like that. So Do you have so a target date yet? Um, fucking, I want to push ourselves, dude. I mean, yeah. should we do it now on the live on the show? So, I mean, it's gonna be out, <laughs> <laughs> but not officially. Yeah. It's just kind of yeah. a preview. Probably uh, fall, September, September, yeah. October release, maybe like a Halloween release. Right. So. But um, yeah. precious own there, guys. Yeah, we have a lot of fucking <laughs> songs, and it's crazy. It's just the matter of getting the time nowadays with everyone working and shit yeah. like that, getting together and fucking. I, I think that patience is very important too, as a yeah. band. Yeah. You, you can't try to get ahead of yourselves and try to put out a product when you know it's not a hundred percent what you yeah. want it to yeah. be. Yeah, and we tried. Shit. That. We yeah. did try that. We uh-huh. did push ourselves to be like, you know Target what? We put this shit. out and, mm-hmm. and you know, we put this out and we're half assed it. Mm-hmm. You know, but we don't want to be that type of band, you know, that comes out. Yeah. And like when it comes out, you're like, you have that lackluster feeling. Yeah. So I'm like, so now that, yeah, yeah, now that we have that formula, like we kind of know what works. Like I, I've recorded like drums, guitars, and all that shit. So um, I think we're going to record a lot of it in house. And then uh, yeah. once the vocals are done, we're going to go to a studio. Or his friend hooks us up sometimes with some studio time. But based on time, it's basically a lot of that's a factor of fucking who can do it and who can do it the yeah. fastest and sound fucking legit. So right. there's a studio in Love Juice that I recorded before when I was a kid. Oh, yeah, yeah. me too. That's where the yeah. the intro to this very podcast was recorded in yeah. Love Juice, Juice. Yeah. back in uh, 2008. So it's been 10 years. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so it's just finding people that can network with us and then can mix and master his vocals onto our tracks and shit like that. So. It's gonna be. It's gonna happen. So I'm really stoked that we finally figured it out. So the yeah. fact is the matter that you know we have we have good songs that you know that we're proud of. You know whether they come out. You know uh, how they come out. It's just what is our preference at mm-hmm. this point. Mm-hmm. You know, but the fact that we, we're proud of these songs that we create. You know, sweet. Cool, man. Well, uh, thank you guys again for being on the show. Now, Nuncio, you've been on the show a couple of times yeah, already. Man. Right? Twice. Right. Twice, right? Yeah. And, He's uh, a vet. He's a seasoned but vet. We were, <laughs> <laughs> we, we were promoting your, your artistic work. Pivoting to that, yeah. what has come about uh, since uh, yeah. you were last on the show? Well, I tell you this, that I have just... It's become a full on career for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm blessed to say that it's become a full on career. That I, it's, it's something... It's what I do day in, day out. Yeah, I have not announced it yet, but I've just become so busy to the point where that I need help. Mm-hmm. I need help in my and graciously, my fiance is going to be the one that's going to be my kind of assistant, helping me out with like a lot of the administration work, which is something that you kind of take for granted because it does take it eats up a lot of time. So yeah, it does. Uh, thank God that you know she's around and she's going to help me out. She can use her bachelor degree. <laughs> It's kind of like that's kind of like what uh, Steph does for us. She's the administrative assistant she's for our, She's show. our marketing, yeah, and, and our health correspondent. And our health correspondent. There you go. Stop, Stop <laughs> drinking in the show so much. Yeah, she'll say that. But oh, what does she know? Falls on deaf ears. Unfortunately, the foo is our HR department, so a lot of things are still to the cracks right now. Who's the last guy who should be our HR guy? By the way, if I may say so. Yeah, you haven't got sued yet, man. <laughs> what You're the welcome. fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but it's been good, bro. Like honestly, you know, graciously to help you guys out as well. You mm-hmm. know, being as far being involved with the food bar show. Yeah, Nunsia, you, you did the yeah. flyer for the food bar fest. I did. And it looks good, man. Yeah, and we appreciate you. you doing that. Oh, it's been a you guys. That's fucking yeah, cool, yeah, dude. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah, I was like, you know what? Let's get these guys something a little. A little bit of that Fister oh, style, you know, yeah. and I think it did. I think we, it really we put did up posters the, uh, the other day, and they yeah, yeah it's, it stood out, especially right next to the men's room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lots of visits. Yeah, well, get you, know, the men you know, you're gonna have a couple of drunk guys just go face right. to face on it. Like, <laughs> what does it say? Well, oh, we know right. what Josh is gonna be doing. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. <laughs> we lost Josh, everyone. If you see a guy just standing in the corner, you know it's me. Yeah, <laughs> don't come Eating me off. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, Nuncio, yeah. what, what can we look forward to in terms of like other exciting projects uh, when it comes to your artwork? Um, I mean, a lot. I'm working with a lot of more entrepreneurs and um, kind of take a step back from musicians and rather mm-hmm. using that as kind of like my uh, my passion projects. That's a lot the of fun the, department. Yeah, that's going to be the fun department because 
I mean, I'm, I'm in a band as well, so I want to be able to take care of the people. You that gotta are, balance you know, both. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and, and, and it gets hard sometimes, but definitely getting in that writing mentality these days. Yeah, no, nah, he's doing big things and shit like that. You see his Instagram and like who the fuck he's hanging out with his cars and shit. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> nah, he's doing big things, and it's just it, at times I just gotta draw him back. I'm like, bro, you got a band too, bro. Yeah. So yeah. No, I feel you, man. Yeah. Hey, I, I gotta, good. I gotta it's balance the nine to five, a band, and this whole goddamn operation. Yeah. And a wife. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I want the wife. <laughs> she's, she's gonna be there. Low maintenance. <laughs> it's low maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, thanks again for being on. Now, yes. uh, you know, we we just promoted the band. Go go ahead and give out that dot com one more time. Woolsinside dot com. Right on. And where can we find your side project for? Oh, for YouTube? myself. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You can find it on iTunes. Uh, Nuncio, and it's called Nebulous. Okay. Nebulous. Right yes. on. Cool, man. Well, thanks again for being on the show. Thank you guys for... Uh, thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Nutsu, thanks for coming back. Of course. I've been telling Three you, I, you know, one of the things that I said for Fubar Fest is every band on the lineup has been on the show before, but even though you've been on the show, it hasn't yeah. been officially Wolves Inside, you know? Yeah, we haven't had another <laughs> we, we haven't, member, like, so... Here it is. <laughs> there it is. We got half. So, it's right, real, guys. It's like, right <laughs> before the freaking it's deadline. Real, you guys just made it. It's a real band. It. You guys just <laughs> made it. I was like, oh, like, fuck, I gotta get on this thing. I need my skin fluid. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a good band. So. Cool, right on, man. Well, we're we're, uh, we're really looking forward to Saturday. It's going to be tons of fun. We're going to be interviewing you guys again while we're while cool. we're there, and you know maybe share a beer amongst each other. And it's just going to be a whole community. What the goal is for Foo Bar Fest is for a bunch of artists from the local area to get together, network, talk amongst each other. If you guys can share information in terms of like other shows you guys can play with each other, you know, by all means, right. you know, just make it a thing. Make it a thing where it's a whole community about artists and josh your sister is going to be presenting some of her artwork there yes as well. she, she is a recent graduate of the university of laverne in the studio sure. art department sure. um she has i think she will be bringing close to eight pieces cool. that she's done herself mm -hmm. uh you know we'll have them but we're still trying to figure out how we will be doing the purchasing you know you can either buy them straight up or you can do like silent auction for a certain number of pieces we'll try and be posting up all around the area so right. mm -hmm. we're gonna see if the venue will put some of them up at certain points of the wall where they're empty mm -hmm. and then we'll have some in a little booth uh for her where she'll be you know be able to describe them to Sick. whoever's interested so yeah. yeah i mean support the art community i mean right. what better place than the arts district of pomona yeah it's a cool little uh, area there yeah a it lot is. of cool stuff yeah. and a lot of cool places to eat around there too there's well, some gems in there i'll have yeah, some on gems. saturday there you go <laughs> cool, you guys want to just get it on? Let's Start get it on out. Cool Fousey Hey The Foos are going to LA Comic Con Yeah, yeah, we got our, uh, we got our badges we, We're official, we're Comic Con official people We will be there I am uh, Putting it in stone right now that I will be there for all three days. So if any of you guys, any yeah, of you, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna try to get uh, that Friday off, and so I can just join you for all three days, man. But yeah, it's gonna be dope getting our press passes for those three days. It's, I, I mean, you went last roaming. year; it was fun, and you went for one day. I was David, David S. Pumpkins. Pumpkins, David S. Pumpkins, <laughs> that SNL skit. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Everyone wanted to take a picture with you, and they did, and they sure did. <laughs> I think I'll try and go as something this year. Still debating on what. Yeah, you're just gonna wear a fucking Laker, Lakers jersey again. Yeah, instead it's gonna be Anthony Davis, fat though. guy in a Lakers jersey. <laughs> hey, it's fat Anthony Davis. <laughs> well, it won't be fat because he's a power forward. Uh, <laughs> that'll be just right. <laughs> At least that's what this jersey will say. Just yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to go this year. I mean, you know what? I may be able to go as Fat Thor. Oh, yeah, just put a wig yeah. on me. I'm I'm there. I already yeah, got the yeah. pop belly. That would be pretty right. sick. Just that's walk. Right. Around, just got to give me the bathrobe, man, and well, I'm there. The fool was thinking of doing that for Halloween. If you do, do not that. Fat Thor. No, you really, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, no Thor at all. Actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, you yeah. Hey, you would have been perfect, man. You're already Dutch. Uh, it would have it would have been a hole in one. What are you talking about? I guess if I made a cameo in the movie, it would have been. <laughs> <laughs> Just gotta dye your hair. I'll be blonde, mystery man. character. Okay, mystery you guys, character. We'll find out. When yeah, the you'll be the foo. Right. We're never gonna. You're know always where off he is. camera anyway. Nobody knows what you look like. <laughs> Dang. Mystery. I want to yeah. be the pen in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll get it's more. Been a leak. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
we'll talk more about Comic Con as it comes closer. But man, I'm excited. As soon as I got that email, I just started uh, getting giddy like giddy like a little schoolgirl, yeah. as opposed to any other day. But mm-hmm. they're gonna have an office reunion, which is cool. I can't wait to go see that shit. Well, yeah. And uh, I think That's you exciting. know what, Kevin Smith pretty much frequents the LA Comic Con. I think he's he didn't make an appearance last year, not last but, year. but uh, he did it from afar. I a, think video was, uh, a video was a video. Yeah, appearance. he sent a video in uh, because that's when uh, Stan Lee was in, in his final days. Yes. And so he just kind of sent a love letter out to, to Stan Lee for uh, everybody in the crowd to say what's up to him and things like that. And, yeah. You know, shortly after he had passed. but Yeah, but I think he's going to... He may show up again this year just because he's a big... You know, it's supporter of yeah. of LA, you know, Comic Con, especially nerd now. Dumb. Yeah, of Nerd Dumb. Yeah, he's the nerd god right now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so Jay and Silent Bob's movie reboot's coming back, mm-hmm. so I can't wait to see what's going on with that shit. Hey, Didn't that have a uh, George Carlin in it? It right had George. He George Carlin has been in almost every Kevin Smith pre, you know, yeah. pre, with the exception of Clerks uh-huh. one, but he was in Dogma. Yeah. He yeah, was in he that was. Dogma movie right. as a priest. He was That's a Catholic right. priest, which is hilarious. And he was in Jane Silent Bob Strikes Back. Mm-hmm. I think he was in Mallrats. I'm not. A, I'm not 100 percent sure on that. I don't I think. Remember. I don't think he was in that. But then he was in like another Jersey Girl, that Kevin Smith movie with Ben Affleck and George Carlin was what, in that but too. In the previous Jane Silent Bob Strikes Back, wasn't he a hitchhiker that would he was get a hitchhiker cross country by giving truckers a blowjob? Yeah, he said that's the universal <laughs> gift for hitchhikers. You guys are doing it all <laughs> wrong. <laughs> <laughs> He's just give him a free BJ and like a hitch, it shows the trucker coming by and he just looks over from a side. He's like, you got to do what you got to do. And he opens up his mouth and just goes down on the dude. It's like, oh, man. <laughs> but th- isn't didn't a nun pick them up after? And it was uh, Carrie Fisher. Yeah. Princess Leia. So yeah. then Jay's yeah. like, all right. He's uh, I get. He's like, I guess I got to go down on this chick. So he tries <laughs> to go down on a nun and they get kicked out of the, uh, the car. That movie was great. They're, pretty much they said that the reboot it's gonna be Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back almost all over rebooted. again, but rebooted. Like yeah. Chris Hemsworth is gonna be it's in totally it. meta. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's, Chris dude, Hemsworth. <laughs> Ke- <laughs> Kevin Smith always loves yeah. doing shit like this, and I I can't wait to see it That's come cool. out. Uh, but you know, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. There's actually another movie. I just recently saw John Wick three, and it was amazing. Everyone needs to go see that shit if you haven't seen it yet. Mm-hmm. I was a little late to the party, but that's fine. <laughs> but they're saying that, uh, you know, with Keanu being as badass and in his height of success right now, they may bring back the Matrix trilogy. Yeah. Hey, fuck it's yes, like a dude. rebirth for Keanu. I mean, he, he was already at the height of his powers with the Matrix trilogy. And then a few years of silence. And then these John Wick movies are really putting him back on the map. Oh, definitely. The choreography in it, it's just amazing. And the script. The script is perfect. You want to know why? Because you only hear about three lines out of John mm-hmm. Wick every single time he's at in the scene. That's it. It's either a funny little quip or just like th- just three words. And it's all action. The choreography is amazing. Yeah. It's top-notch choreography in those movies. Dude, like right, right away, it starts off just him fucking up dudes, killing a guy. He killed a dude with a book. With a fucking book, yeah. Like, and it wasn't just a dude; it was like a clipper, uh, Bo- Boban Marjanovic. Yeah. yeah, he uh, he was pretty much a basketball player. Was an assassin trying to kill him, mm-hmm. dude. It's fucking great. They, I, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but uh, Fusi, you know that um, that one Japanese guy that he goes up against, that assassin, right. that was like a he's sushi. Like the guy? main antagonist, for the, yeah. Of the movie. Do you know where he's from? No, he is from Iron Chef. So, if you watch Iron Chef. You know, so I don't know if he's still on there, but he was on there for a few seasons. Okay. He is the Iron Chef, the man that's supposed to be like in that weird. He has like a weird kimono and he's like the he's like judges or like cooks or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's him. Really? That is that actor. Which is funny because uh, he's introduced in that movie as like a sushi chef. Exactly. That, so it's just like, holy shit, they did this on purpose. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I, I encourage a lot of And you. his fighting scenes were amazing. They were awesome. Yeah. And he was funny. I thought he was he, fucking he was, hilarious. He was, uh, yeah, he had some comic relief. He was a, he was a pretty much a fanboy of John of Wick, John but Wick. trying to kill John Wick. Yeah. Yeah. While also he, like fanboying while he was fighting. He was well, like, oh all, man, you're so of, cool. Uh, all of his opponents throughout the movie had... Uh, you know, though they were trying to kill him because there was a bounty out on John Wick, were telling him it's been an honor fighting with you. Yeah, or fighting you. Well, there's even two guys towards the end that are mm-hmm. just kind of like, 
well, all right, we're not going to kill you right here. Come on, man, let's fight. Let's go down. Yeah. And then they even alluded to, like, dude, you're old. Like, you're moving so slow. Yeah. And it's like, well, it's been five years. It's like, he's an old man now. <laughs> and he kicks both of their asses and is in. doesn't kill them. He's just like, I'll see you guys again. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, damn, these motherfuckers come back. Yep. Yeah, but, uh, you know, going back to The Matrix, there's some, been some details on what The Matrix movies will be. They will actually be a prequel. Uh, and they will be starring none other than Michael B. Jordan as nice. a young Morpheus. Oh, Wait, so prequel. we're going to be getting Morpheus's story before Dang. leading before you know it gets yeah. to him. Now, is Neil. he going to have his teeth? The is, gap? Yeah. I mean, he has to. He has to. They got to do it. They, they got to give it. him his teeth. Yeah, they have to. Be like I mean, that Superman. Mustache. That's what you're concerned yeah. about, dude. <laughs> that's what you're concerned about. Yes. <laughs> And Spider me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, we're gonna have to put a fucking hammer in, I think, to your teeth. Yeah, yeah <laughs> sorry, bro. Sorry. Gonna have to put that gap in. So spent three million in CGI just for his teeth. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll, you'll still be in Creed 3. <laughs> I, honestly, I think all they have to do is just put like, there's like this little black tape or something that they do, yeah. and they put it right in the middle. Because uh, there was another movie where an actor had to have like a fucking sick gap. In between his teeth. I can't remember what, but uh-huh. they it's just like a little black line that just makes it look like you have a gap in it. So they may do something like that. Right. Yeah, I mean, why not? Why not, man? I don't like know. Three it's million or thirty dollars. <laughs> yeah. Here's some tape. Here's some tape. Go for it. Uh yeah, that's pretty much all that's been coming out so far. Though, you know, they'll obviously tell more right. as soon as they get more actors lined up. But so far that's the idea. They need they want Michael B. Jordan as a young Morpheus mm-hmm. and do a prequel. That would be dope. I would love to see Morpheus in his prime. Yeah. Yeah. When he was calling all the shots and doing it all himself. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, the, he's the vet. Yeah, because remember, he was pretty much the big threat before Neo came along. Right. So, uh, yeah, it, I, that's going to be a sick-ass movie. Mm-hmm. So, Foos, are you guys excited for Spider-Man Far From Home? Not the Foo. Nope. I know the Foo isn't. Well, <laughs> but he doesn't why? like the Spider Man. He hates Spider Man. He, he, he thinks Spider Man has been on uh, on our, on our TV and movie screens for uh, too long. He, he's overstayed his welcome, is what he thinks. Right, then can you say the same about Batman? No. Why Batman's not? Fucking dope. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I stand corrected, sir. Right. Uh, so somebody that I know who hasn't been on the TV screens for too long is the Hulk. Oh, the, the it ruined the Hulk, yeah, the in my Hulk, opinion. He, he, yeah, it. he had a shaky kind of uh, start to his uh, Marvel Universe. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, the main reason is because of, you know, film rights. Mm-hmm. And right now, the person that, the studio that owns the film rights is Universal. Not yeah. Disney, not not Fox, it's just, not Sony, it's pretty much just Universal. That's why you just see him do cameos now. Yeah, because they uh, the only reason they can use him is if he's involved with another person's story. Mm-hmm. So that's why they did hit, they added him in Ragnarok. They wanted to do their own version of World War or of, uh, Planet Hulk. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, like there's a lot of storylines that the Hulk has been involved in that they just haven't used and it, it's unfortunate cuz a lot of his storylines in the comics are fucking gnarly. I mean, the Hulk, he's kind of a traveler. Uh, he deals with pretty much everybody in the Marvel universe. He, he has a big storyline with the X-Men, too. Yeah, he fucks with Wolverine. He yeah. fucks with Wolverine, yeah. yeah. Old Man Logan, that storyline. He fights Wolverine in general, yeah. I believe. They have a fight in like Canada or some shit. Mm-hmm. But then he also... There's a huge story in the comics called uh, World War Hulk, where Hulk is in you know he's in that planet sakar and right. his plane that the avengers took a sent him there on blew up and killed his family that he had while he was there so to take revenge on the avengers he leads like a full exodus of that planet back to earth and they start fucking up and killing like and hunting down all the avengers Crazy. and like killing them all that seems a little excessive doesn't it <laughs> doesn't it <laughs> and it, it's a it's a crazy storyline because he enslaves all of the Illuminati, which mm-hmm. is Doctor Strange, Mr. Fantastic, Charles Xavier, um, Iron Man, and I believe it was Namor and Black Bolt. Yeah. He enslaves them to kill them, but then all of a sudden this character called the Sentry comes out and fights the Hulk. And like they're both supposed to be like the strongest people in the world. Right. And they both fight each other to the point of exhaustion where the Hulk completely disappears and all that's left is Bruce Banner. So they had to beat the shit out of the Hulk for Bruce Banner to come back. 
and save everyone because yeah. it, it's like in, instead of Bruce being in uh, in there, mm-hmm. the Hulk just took over, and that's why he, all that crazy shit started happening, and he started killing fuckers. That's crazy. Wild. Yeah, so we're missing a lot. We're missing a lot yeah. out of the Hulk. The yeah. MCU is just. <laughs> it's small, dude. Yeah. It's it's small compared to you know how the comics are, yeah. but I like what they're doing so far, especially after Captain Marvel when they introduced the scroll. Mm-hmm. Uh, the dynamic or the way they introduced them was very interesting. It's different from the comics where they were the villain. Uh, instead, they are like not the villain per se, but you could see them being victimized by right. the Kree in Captain Marvel. Well, guess what, Fu. We're going to be finding out in these next few films that two of the characters in the MCU are have been scrolled the entire time. Oh, my God. Holy crap. So we may end up doing, uh, we may end up seeing at some point a Secret Invasions arc. So for those of you that aren't familiar, Secret Invasions are when the scroll pretty much kidnapped Captain America and a bunch of Avengers and just secretly supplanted themselves in the Sorry. whole Avengers it, just in the Avengers in general. And so then they all of a sudden start taking over. And you don't know who's the real Captain America, who's the fake one, who's the real Iron Man, who's the fake one, because they just, they're just they able to yeah, yeah. copy all of their abilities mm-hmm. right. and everything. So it's... it's crazy. I was going to say Hawkeye might be one of them, but I'm like, who wants to be that guy? <laughs> well, he's not Hawkeye anymore, right? He's Ronin. He's now. Ronin. Ronin. Now. It's a mohawk, bro. You got the mohawk, man, yeah. and, the, and the big dragon tattoo. Can't um, can't fucks with that. And nope. a sword in your face, foo. Yeah, a fucking iPhone. He <laughs> said. <laughs> he said, "Don't fuck. You guys aren't gonna include me in any Avengers shit. Fine, I'm gonna start killing motherfuckers." Yep. You guys ever see that meme? Like, who the fuck? Um, who was the hero in um? Was it Endgame? Endgame. Yeah. 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 Was it the rat? <laughs> oh yeah, it was the rat. Yeah, that yeah. they said that the mouse because if fucking rat if the rat didn't. didn't if the rat didn't bring back that man, we would not. We never had an Avengers. Well, Doctor movie. Strange called it. I mean, it was the one in a million chance of, of of everything going down the way it's supposed to to save the world. He did it, man. Doctor Strange saved us. Thank you, Mouse. Without doing rat, anything, whatever the hell you are. You, <laughs> yeah. uh, so, I want to move on to another movie, another big series that's finally ending, or at least a saga that's ending. This upcoming December and Christmas, none other than Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. So it's been confirmed that Mark Hamill is returning as a Force ghost Mm -hmm. in this movie. So he kind of has to since they fucked up his character in the previous. You movie. know what? Ryan Johnson did not do a good job. I I put all of my faith in J.J. Abrams that he will. He should have just fix been doing it. it from you know the entire time. Yeah, I, th- I don't know why he didn't do it the second one. I think it was a he was doing another movie at the time. I'm yeah. not sure, but yeah, they fucked he, up. He remained executive it. producer, but he just wasn't like actively directing it. Yeah, I think because the first one was. Very strenuous on him because it took him like two, three years to well, do the Star first Star Wars. I mean, you got to live up to the the freaking, hype, the hype of what is Star Wars. Yeah, the especially especially since they brought about a lot of the practical, you know, the practical effects with right. the puppeteering and all that. Mm-hmm. They brought that back, which I thought was a nice touch. I mm-hmm. I thought the first, the three prequels were too heavily CGI. It, it, it took you out of the story a little bit with all the CGI that was involved, especially yeah. when the CGI hadn't been perfected yet. Uh, yeah, first time. yeah, and especially if you look back on him now, you can tell like the CGI was like, Ugh, all right, well, right. It, I mean, some of the story. It all honestly, you and McGregor saved the prequels for me. If yeah. it wasn't for you and McGregor as Obi Wan, I probably would not be rewatching any of those yeah, three. Even a little bit of Qui Gon Jinn was was pretty good. He's the only, yeah. Liam Neeson's the only reason why I watch yeah. Episode One again. <laughs> not Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Fuck, don't get me started. <laughs> Do not get me started on Jar Jar. You know, I, I, I think so. This a movie, so do do. Who the fuck invited this guy? Yeah. Um, I was really kind of hoping just because I like. You know, the, for if if we were if we were gonna be just trolling everybody, don't you say it? If Jar Jar Binks don't. was Snoke, oh, <laughs> dude, he, he goes to the dark side and he becomes Emperor Snoke, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. and then he gets burnt in battle, and that's why he looks the way he does. God damn that it, been, that would have been dope. <laughs> stop it! Come on, man, stop what you're doing. Just stop just it. Would have been a twist. <laughs> yeah, it sure would have been. Not a twist any of us would like. But uh, yeah, I mean, if they do the full blue ghost thing uh, with Mark Hamill uh-huh. or if he's just like in her head talking to her maybe both maybe a little bit of both I mean that's how uh, that's how we saw Obi-Wan with Luke he was in his head a little bit you and, know yeah, and, and he appears at the end yeah Empire Strikes Jedi. Back yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, foo. You said you got stuff for me, don't you? Yeah, man. Some video game stuff, actually. Ooh. Yeah. Sick. All right. Yeah. F- for the foo, I think you'll appreciate this. Crash Team Racing is now available on PlayStation. Oh. What? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Remastered? Remastered. Uh, looks like I'm buying Crash Team Racing, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think they're bringing back uh, more of the old school games, like the Spyro games, too, as well, right? I think, yeah, and they're also bringing back Banjo and Kazooie. Did you see that? Mm-hmm. Nintendo's bringing back oh, Banjo that's and Kazooie. Favorite. That's my favorite game of all time. Yeah, dude. Best they're, game ever. That was yeah. a fun one. That was. They're actually adding him also in... Yeah. Uh, Super Smash Brothers, the oh, new one that just came oh, out. Really? Oh, I've yeah. seen the little commercial for that. Yeah, yeah he's dope as hell. he's, he's going to be added in that now. I always fuck with that Golden Eye. Like, oh Golden yeah, Eye. you know what? I still have my copy of Golden. Yeah, the N sixty four Golden Eye. Sixty four. Fucking stay up late and fucking. That was a great game. Golden Gun or would change up the matches and shit. I, I especially in the facility. I don't know if you guys ever got to the part where you you know there's like a wall where you can literally just kind of hide, like get yourself stuck in, but. You can start like shooting people. Yeah. <laughs> there, like I used to figure out how to exactly get myself in there, get there with my PP nine, and as soon as motherfuckers just go by me, go tit tit, and like what the fuck? Where did I come from? Because it's not like Call of Duty where you can go to like kill cam and see where they shot yeah. you from. So I used to piss off. Yeah, it's just you die. You're a yeah. camp- you're a camping. <laughs> I was camping. oh hell yeah, man! I was one of them <laughs> camping shows. I used to piss off everyone. <laughs> what was worse is I used to like surround it with mines. Yeah. So I'd be in that little room with mines all over the floor. So if someone figured out how to get in there, I'm like, fine, we'll both die, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Go with me, Kamikaze. That's right. <laughs> uh, also um, at E3, I don't know if you saw Dragon Ball Z uh, Kakarot. Kakarot. Yes, it's fucking sick. Um, I forget which game it's comparable to, but it's a role playing game. Yeah, it's an RPG style game. Uh, it's so for those that have played any of the Dragon Ball games, uh, Xenoverse. It's like a mixture of the RPG style of Xenoverse, which I play a lot, and um, but it's open world, so you literally can fly around the entire Dragon Ball world and go from town to town and interact. And you know what's dope? Actually, the transitional scenes and the little movie scenes. Are the actual anime scenes? Oh, sick! In the game, dope. yeah, yeah, they yeah, pretty it looks much fucking dope. They, I like how South South Park did that too in their video game. Yeah, that's how yeah, it's. Yeah. That's how this is going to oh, be. Nice. You're yeah. you're pretty much going to play the story of Goku Kakarot, starting from I believe it's like a little before the Saiyan. From Raditz, yeah, from Raditz, from when mm-hmm. his brother Raditz shows up, yeah. and then I think they're just going to keep growing. They may add some DLC. Uh, it's coming out later next or early next year. But they're going to add some DLC to where it goes all the way up until the Boo Saga, I'm assuming, to where he can go to like Drag- Super so Saiyan 3. So pretty much a shitload of content. Yeah, and it's going to be a huge game because the Dragon Ball games, the the game I play, Xenoverse, you you literally have a lot of free motion, mm-hmm. and you do everything that they do in the in the in the game in the show. Yeah, like you get those high speed attacks where all of a sudden you're just fucking bombarding each other. Mm-hmm. And, like, you're zipping all across the, the map. So it, it's fun for people that, you know, if you want to just get into or look look up videos on YouTube right. of those games, Xenoverse. Uh, that's going to be a good idea of what Kakarot's going to be. Uh, they actually have YouTube clips of Kakarot. Yeah, they have, they have, they have uh, live gaming, too. Yeah, they, them testing it out. they tested it out at E3. They had a live presentation uh, yeah. of it at E3. So just look it up on YouTube, Dragon Ball Dragon Ball Z Kakarot video game. And Looks pretty dope. You'll see a lot of cool scenes on that. Also, real quick, just to finish it off. Have you guys heard of this show, Final Space? Final Mm-mm. Space. Yeah, no. it, it nope. actually premiered on TBS. It's, not all about, it's eh? an animated show. Mm-hmm. Um and check this out. Conan O'Brien is one of the executive producers. Really? Oh, yeah. Um, it's pretty much a comparable show to Rick and Morty. Pretty much. Okay. Kind of oh, like okay. a filler filler show that you can kind of watch and until Rick and Morty comes back is what it's being compared to. Okay. So it's so this is the premise for Final Space. Uh, it actually got an eight point four on IMBD, which isn't that bad. Not that bad. It in the midst of working off pr- a prison sentence. An astronaut named Gary meets mysterious planet-destroying alien Mooncake, with whom he immediately bonds. But Gary doesn't realize that his new sidekick is actually in demand by the sinister Lord Commander, who will do all he can to secure Mooncake's untapped evil powers. The animated intergalactic comedy follows Gary and Mooncake's adventures to unlock the mystery of final space where the universe ends. So this actually premiered on February 15th 
and I don't see who the voice actors are, but this yeah, actually I don't know either. This looks pretty interesting. Yeah, it, it's a pretty interesting show from what I've seen. It's on it, it's on Cartoon Network, but it's also on TBS. Mm-hmm. So premieres on Cartoon Network uh, eleven thirty at night on Monday, and then pretty much any other, on Tuesday at five five a.m. Jesus Christ, off off hours. <laughs> Yeah. For all you tweakers out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all you guys that got insomnia, you can watch it. I don't it. think we have any tweakers in our demographic here. But, um, I mean, if we got if we got a few. Yeah. Let us, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing it for statistical yeah. studies. <laughs> me, me, me and my brothers, used to, I, got, I got four younger brothers. So, me and my brothers. Um, Speaking to, of tweaking. Right. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of tweaking. <yeah. laughs> we, used to right bet, we used to bet, like. Who could watch like Who could stay up and watch all the adult fi- uh, adult swim um, shows? Adult films, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, adult films. <laughs> <laughs> adult <laughs> swim, Cartoon adult Network. Swim when it was on Cartoon films. Network, gotcha. jerk gotcha. off marathon. Go. <laughs> <laughs> we used to figure out like fire, who could dude. like who could like stay up the longest and watching those up because it gets weird. A lot of friction. The, the, the yeah. adult swim shows they get weird. Yeah, they do. For, uh, trippy. Like, the, the later they get, the later sometimes they're just weird for the sake of being weird too. You think so? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've seen like their little transitional commercials on adult yeah. swim. It's like trippy right. as fuck. Yeah. It'd be like Family Guy and then everything after that. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> what is happening? Like their little music uh, sections that they fucking pick and it's a random ass artist. It's they fun. use a lot of Run the Jewels. A lot of Run the Jewels yeah. stuff on there. And Tribe. I know this. They use a lot of Run the Jewels and Tribe on there. Which is dope though. Whenever you hear them come out, like, because I, I remember I heard, I just saw one of those commercials. I'm like, fuck. I heard Tribe Called Quest in a while. So I immediately went to start listening to Tribe Called Quest. Yeah. Because it's, it's. Yeah, they got some good stuff on yeah. there. So who yeah. won that uh, marathon? <laughs> uh, my. The brother uh, younger than me. My youngest so. brother. <laughs> he, he, he was into that. He, yeah. he was into that. Those Adult Swim uh, shows. I mean, he's still into all that Rick and Morty and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I That's think my dope. favorite show was the fucking metal, the metal show. Was oh, Metal Apocalypse. Metal Apocalypse was funny as fuck. Yeah. Like, I like that. Yeah. I, I really. Uh, well, growing up in high school, I was watching a lot of the Brack show and C Lab. Oh, C Lab or great. the fucking Hunger Force, the yeah. Aqua Teen yeah. Hunger Force. Yeah. Aquafina was, was, was the always the watch. Meatball. Yeah, <laughs> meat, meat wad. Yeah. It was stupid Those for the funny. sake of being stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I even, I my brother every Christmas and every time my birthday comes around, he always plays the Feliz Navidad Aqua Teen Hunger Force version. <laughs> so <laughs> it goes where meat wad. He's like, okay, now everyone, I want you to say meat navi wad. <laughs> and so then you just see you hear the mariachi go me navi wad yeah <laughs> it's funny I, yeah you got i i, I recommend see, i gotta see that version just listen to it yeah it's a meet navi wad the aqua teen hunger force it's fucking funny as shit but uh you know speaking on marathon yeah. me and my brother and my cousins one time we did a marathon of freddy of nightmare on elm street movies and we tried to see oh. if we can watch every single nightmare on elm street oh, dang. i tough. had nightmares for a week i didn't go to sleep for like two days just because i was terrified <laughs> i'm like oh he ain't getting me this motherfucker ain't getting me in my sleep it ain't happening i think it was like 10 <laughs> wow yeah it was not a good idea for a 10 year old to <laughs> just marathon nightmare on elm street and then go to sleep and then go yeah try yeah. <laughs> try to go to sleep. try to go to sleep never happened well guys i wanted to also bring up something that uh caught my attention this was posted a few weeks ago but i just found out about it just a couple days ago Django and zorro movie coming from quentin tarantino and jared carmichael dang can you imagine so dang. like they're gonna they're gonna guess i gotta up. watch Django. you never yeah, seen, you Django, never seen Django? Django? oh you're fucking oh, up dude yeah, you love it movie. it's free on youtube i watched it like last sunday oh, oh, man. oh dope yeah the yeah the D set. <laughs> so they've been tapped to write the script, Quentin Tarantino and Jared Carmichael, uh, but it's unclear if Tarantino will co-write with him. Uh, it's just kind of like we're in the really, really early stages. So, And it's also unclear if Tarantino plans on directing the movie or if he'll simply just hand the project off to somebody else. Uh, but the film is based on the comic sequel to Tarantino's Django Unchained. And it's being focused that the, the film's lead character is going to team up with Zorro. Which is dope. Which yeah. uh, and and it's it, that same kind of time period, too. So we're talking about a Antonio Banderas Zorro return? Oh, dang. dang. Imagine. Can dude, he still pull that off? Six years old? I mean, <laughs> dude, he still looks he still looks great. It's Antonio Banderas. Later on. He's like 60, right? <laughs> it's almost something around that. He's yeah. up there. I don't know if he'd be the best person for it. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> Diego, but, Diego Luna. But uh, they they provide a synopsis about this, and and you know if, uh, if you didn't already know, this is already a comic. 
you know, when uh, both of them teaming up like this. So the official Django Unchained sequel, uniting the gun blazing Western hero with the legendary swordsman of literature, film, and comics, Zorro. He set several years after the events of Django Unchained. Django again pursues evil men in his role as a bounty hunter. Taking to the roads of the American Southwest, he encounters the aged and sophisticated Diego de la Vega by sheer chance. Django is fascinated by his unusual character, the first wealthy white man he's met who seems totally unconcerned with the color of his skin and who can hold his own in a fight. Django hires on as Diego's bodyguard and is soon drawn into a fight to free the local indigenous people from brutal servitude. Learning much from the older man as he did from King Schultz, he discovers that slavery isn't inclusive to his people. And he even dons the mask of Zorro in their mission of mercy. Dude, there you go. It opens the door for Antonio Banderas. He oh, said an, an yeah. aged, an aged yeah, Zorro. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So he's gonna be like Wolverine. Fuck it. So why not? <laughs> 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 he's a Mexican Wolverine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, now, what, <laughs> because it's still in the early stages, it's still unclear if Jamie Foxx would be uh, doing the uh, Jangle role. Which yeah, okay. I, if we know anything about Jamie Foxx, I, I think he would be down. He would be down. That that the role was meant for him when he was. When he played Django before, because but as originally Django was white, he wasn't he wasn't black in the original comic mm-hmm. book, mm-hmm. so that's why they changed they changed it for Jamie Fox. So I mean, come on, Jamie but it Fox, added so much to the character, just making him black in that specific time period it when did. slavery was going down and all that stuff. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're right, you're right. But come on, man. Let's just let's just bring back Antonio. I'm I'm fighting hard for Antonio Banderas here, man. Let's do it. I mean, because he start a petition. I'm starting yeah. a petition right now. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, come on, think about it. He's part of that whole Robert Rodriguez, Quentin Tarantino family. Like he's been in almost every Robert Rodriguez Desperado. movie. Desperado. Desperado. That's true. That's yeah. true. That would be a very satisfying. Once film, upon a time I in think. Mexico. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I mean, he had a remake Summer Hike too. Dang, Selma Hayek has the wife this time instead of Catherine oh, Zeta Jones. Selma Hayek. Oh, hell She's yeah. She's still banging for how old she is. Oh, dude. Oh, don't yeah. even, don't <laughs> even get yeah, me started. I do her favor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Well, that, that's it for me. Foo. No more tangents for me. All right. I think we've geeked out enough. <laughs> no! All right. Well, we'll be right back with the joint report and the music highlights. Stick around. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Josh. And the Foo here tagging along. Be sure to catch us on Foo Bar Sports. Listen in now on Tuesday. Catch us on any major podcast app or our own website, foobarshow.com. You can also find us on our Facebook group, Foo Bar Sports. Join in on the conversation, sports talk, latest rumors, and sports news. Boogity doobity. Listen, the new single by The Fallen Electric. Listen. Available Friday, June 21st. Download or stream it on your favorite music app. All this time I never believe myself. Go to thefallenelectric.com for all news, show dates, and contact information. Are you on me? Give me some, I'll smoke you two under the table. Well, guys, on today's joint report, I wanted to cover a couple of things. Legalization isn't enough. And uh, they've introduced 10 things that every new cannabis law must have throughout the country. It's kind of like uh, little things to expect okay. uh, with new legalization of cannabis. And I just wanted to go over those 10 things. Uh, number one is allowing the ability for people to uh, home grow. You know, that's one of the things that comes along with every bill that's being passed across the nation. I think it's important because a lot of people just want to do it themselves. You know, they, they, yeah, don't, they don't have to go especially to the people who are all, all, all organic and all that shit. You know, they, they want to just make sure that they control what they're putting into their system. Yeah, I mean, if you have the means to do it. Yeah. Yeah. The vegans. <laughs> I mean, hey, look, if they're going to grow my supply, then I'm all I'm all for vegan vegans. Stoners. Making, yeah, vegan stoners. Why not? Yeah. That's that's a little concerning, depending what kind of laws they build around the home. Well, what do we got going on? Uh, do you know anything about the California law regarding that, how much you're able to grow? Uh, I think you can uh, do six premies and then six flowering plants, so okay. 12. 12 plants yeah. in total, right? Um, I'm not sure on the updated laws, though. Okay. I, th- I don't think... enough for some people? 
Hmm? Isn't that enough for some people? Not for this person. Some. Pe- not this person. <laughs> some, not all. <laughs> well, remember, the people who want more, the, the kind of black market. Yeah, they're trying to tap into the yeah. black market, yeah. which is, uh, that's why they're, they're also, saying. Also, if you're using, be black. If, you, <laughs> if you're using that much water, it's concerning what you do with the runoff, because that's. Yes, pretty much. It's an environmental hazard yeah. as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, mm. for sure. Uh, number two is automatic expungement for people who have had convictions regarding cannabis. So oh, that's you a, know, taking that idea. away, taking it away from the records, giving them the ability to get a goddamn job again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's important. Too. Yeah, gonna, hugely important. They're gonna refund me my five grand for my lawyer. Nah, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything but that. I you think. Pay, you paid for his kids' Jeez. college yeah, tuition. Right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Number three, diverse representation in regulation. Ensure as non-negotiable, never expiring statutory requirement that people from disproportionately harmed communities are represented at the very top of the regulating agency. There's plenty who are qualified already in Mm -hmm. this kind of thing. Number four is transparency in regulation. Ensuring that the regulating agency is diverse, independent, subject to full transparency, and appointed by different people, not just one person, because that can get really one-sided if it's somebody who's against these kinds of laws. True. Okay. Uh, Number five is dedicated tax revenue. Don't allow legislators to divert cannabis tax revenue. Kind of that thing that we uh, deal with every summer when they raise gas prices in summertime. And then what do they tell us? We're going to use the money to fix the roads, still potholes all over the goddamn place. Yeah, what road are you fixing, Yeah, motherfuckers? Exactly. So there's that. Number six is a two-parter. Establish equity assistance programs. Separate from the reinvestment, invest a specific percentage of tax revenue into technical assistance, hiring programs, and interest-free loans for disproportionately affected communities with a funding mechanism for initial programming and outreach as soon as the law passes. It's kind of like diverting some of the money into (laughs) such, such programs as well. Second part of that is deadlines must be met. If you're going to regulate it, you know, make sure that you have somebody overseeing these things happen, too, to be able to meet these deadlines. Which so, so pretty much they're laying the groundwork for building an, uh, an actual infrastructure yeah. for legislation. Mm-hmm. So rather than just say, OK, bill's passed, figure it out. They're, they really want to build on that. Then. And who better to look at than to Colorado, who has been spearheading the entire nation oh. and how they you know how to do it properly, how to mm-hmm. do it right. They're the benchmark right now for how marijuana legalization should go. So as long as we can follow their game plan and as long as this is actually implemented, fuck, by all means, like every other state should definitely use this as a bill of rights, you know, mm-hmm. per se, mm-hmm. or yeah, or just a guideline of how Marijuana law should definitely be enforced. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm hell. I'm all for it. When are they going to be enacting this? Or it's a list of ideas that oh, okay. would be all encompassing for future states or local municipalities to try to implement gotcha. different rules. So it's kind of like that. Th- this would be the benchmark. Got gotcha. you. Uh, number seven is limit licenses and require diversity goals. We were talking about this a few episodes ago, where they were trying to make it so that everybody in California can have a basic access and reasonable access to your local marijuana dispensary mm-hmm. if for people who are actually seeking this kind of product because of medical purposes they have to drive over 100 miles to get to a legitimate place to get it mm-hmm. uh, so they're trying to people or, are relocating their lives for the cannabis stores yeah it's it's something that can't be stopped and won't be stopped yeah you know so at least make it reasonable enough for people who are trying to get to it to have it yeah number eight is tie tax revenue to meet mandates this is a statutory requirement, is that tax revenue flows only to municipalities that have honored these mandates. Leave it up to municipalities to figure out how to make their local laws and processes inclusive to disproportionately harm the communities before receiving any local taxes. So just to make it nice and fair and give it to the municipalities that are actually for this kind of thing, at least for now until they implement that previous thing I just said, yeah. where you can have it all across the state depending on the state you're in. Yeah. Number nine is license holders must contribute to government set goals. Require every license can, which is kind of the same thing I just said in the previous couple of ones. Yeah, but it sounds like a lot of these points are repeating themselves a little. They are in a different angle. Yeah. Uh, I think it's important that they try to cover all angles gotcha. and, and leave yeah, as little. Yeah. It, can't you know, leave like one gray area. You're going to have line. loopholes up the ass and somebody's going to really take advantage of it. Got gotcha. you. So, and then number 10 is demand regular data reporting so that you can regulate it. Yeah. No, I, mm-hmm. I agree. So, uh, do surveys, customer surveys on. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Please stop. Oh, what? <laughs> but that's how you can. Well, you already <laughs> get that from weed maps. <laughs> True. <laughs> the the surveys that. are the amount of weed they're buying. 
Well, that's the data that you're reporting. It's going to be sales data. Yeah, and two and birds, all man. Stuff. There's all kinds of categories and data that you can go into. I actually it, work with a lot of CBD companies uh-huh. nowadays. There are actually a lot more now. Yeah, I've oh, seen yeah. that. They, they're, there's a lot more. There's a big uh, boom in California for them. Yeah. yeah. They're mm-hmm. start, are they starting to deliver uh, online now? I, I keep seeing a lot of online CBD delivery things. Um, well, c- yeah, because you don't have to be a weed store now to sell CBD. Yeah. You could just straight up sell CBD mm-hmm. and not require yeah. the marijuana license. Amazon, get CBD so I can yeah. get all my shit from you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get in a couple days. A couple days, de- next day. Yep, yep, yep. What <laughs> do you guys think? Is this, uh, is this pretty reasonable, you think? No. It's not I overbearing, don't. I don't think. I think it's things that they're already in place for alcoholic purposes, for tobacco purposes. It's just develop that same kind of infrastructure for the marijuana industry. No, I, I agree that this should definitely you're always going to have some people that are not with it, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It, that's it, that's it, just the fact of life. It, yeah. Well, do you think... What do you think we should do with the people who aren't compliant then? Like you said, they're trying to get rid of all past, um, you know, misdemeanors. Mm-hmm. Throw the book at them. <laughs> no, no. Well, I mean, you're trying to clear everyone, but are you restarting, like, you know, restarting all these guys being persecuted again, or what's the plan? I think, I think once they hit the reset button, anybody who doesn't comply with the, any local regulations or any laws that are now put into place so that we can try to regulate this industry, then, yeah, there should be fines, there should be things that go down so that they comply and that we're all kind of living into one society and working together as we're gonna further expun- the industry. We're going to expunge your record, then... Put your shit back on it if you don't follow orders. <laughs> it's pretty but much kinda, it. Yeah, no. I mean, that's, much that that's how society works, anything, bro. Dude. Like, what do you want me to tell you? It it sounds like anything. black men. You don't like it? All right. <laughs> Fuck. But well, yeah. that's that's our penal system, man. <laughs> penal. <laughs> <laughs> that's your penal system. Yeah, you got, you got that's you, Josh's penile system. Foo, um, what'd you get? Um, if anyone's interested, uh, I'm not. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Moving on. No, what do you got? Music highlight. What do you got? No. Uh, the World of Cannabis has a podcast. So it's a podcast called World of Cannabis. I suggest listening to it. Mm-hmm. Episode two, they have a timeline of the history of cannabis, okay. uh, which is really informative. And the next couple episodes were about CBD, THC, cannabinoids, pharmaceutical use alleviations, and terping history as well, one of their episodes. So, what is this called? What's the podcast? Uh, World of Cannabis. They oh, only World have about cannabis. seven or eight episodes nice. right now. That's enough. So. That's enough. Hey, who's the fool that lit up the plant and was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it was a happy little accident. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah they, uh, they're only about a 15 to 20 minute and a long episode. So All right. not a lot All of right. your time. Not, not really. digestible. If you got to commute a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Right on, man. I'll go to check that out. I mean, from my understanding, it came out of Afghanistan, or at least from that region, right? That's where the cannabis seeds originated from. Okay. From Afghanistan. Yeah. yeah. And then some from India. Like, I saw, we saw that, a little small documentary on Netflix about yeah, the it was, uh, cannabis. Yeah, it was... What the hell is that documentary nah, called? I don't know. It's like a 10-minute f- little documentary. 10 to 15-minute yeah. documentary. It was pretty, pretty cool. Short. It kind of give you the... Yeah. yeah, give you the rundown. Like they have, other, they have other episodes, too, where it's like they give you the rundown of like a certain topic for like they give you everything in like 15 minutes. Right. And I think Ke- Kevin Smith was actually the narrator for that episode. For that one. Yeah, so it was pretty cool. It was a, it's yeah. a good episode. Um, good info. Yeah. Cool. Well, everybody educate yourselves. God damn it. Do it. Yeah. It's the world we live in now. Smoke weed every day. Okay. All right. Well, let's get it on with the music highlights. <laughs> Well, guys, at last, we are going to feature some of Wolves Inside's tracks. Guys, well, you, you tracks. brought two tracks in for us today. Let's talk about the first one, Trash Talk. What can we know about this one? So that was like the first song that we actually got together with. Like uh, we, yeah. like I told you guys, uh, we talked at Boston's and got together and shit. And I didn't really have a fucking formal mic. So I think I bought like the Sure SM. The yeah. one that fucking Michael Jackson used recording Thriller. Oh, okay. So I got that mic, and I got everything hooked up, and then got the wiring and uh, the preamp and all that stuff. So it's we did the song in one day. It was just like I had this song. I had this idea. This fool came over. And then right before work, we knocked it out, like, in, like, four hours. And it's rough, but it's fucking – it's our – we're going to show you two songs. Like as we said, this is the first song. And okay. Trash Ox is just the working title. Probably be something else once – it's going to be on the final okay. like, EP this fall. So it's a uh, – Good energy. Um, I hope you guys like it. You know, it's in the realm, so just dig it, you know? All right. Sweet. Let's check it out. Search. 
searching for something Don't know, don't know, but I want more The voices in my head Ticking, matching, or repeating what you said again Choices surrounding me, making everything conflicting. What I said again. Good shit, man. That's pretty that good for rough. it being a rough yeah, mix, that was dude. Like, like day one shit. Oh, damn. No that way. Sick. That was day one stuff? Yeah. That oh, one. damn. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's rough, as you can say. But, um, I, yeah, oh, I couldn't tell. But, like, <laughs> it was but good we shit. got together, and yeah, I had uh, we collaborate and stuff like that. I already had kind of like a theme of it and shit like that. But yeah, man, it's going to be on the, the final version of Mix and Master will be on the, the EP. Uh, on the EP. This, this fall, so. Oh, damn. Good energy, so. Yeah. I definitely want to get it. It's a working EP. title, right? So it might not be called Trash Yeah, it's not going to be called Trash Talk. Yeah, I think it might be called like. Hereditary Talking shit. shit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shit, shit goblin or something. Shit goblin, <laughs> yeah. No, I, everything. It, all, all this is like you know, in in the moment. So yeah. it's just like it's gonna be something else called something else. Okay, right. Uh, Artistically, uh, yeah. No. Do you guys normally play it on your set when you play live? Um, not at the moment. Um, mm-hmm. it, we're just uh, like I said, like we do the covers and like originals. Some some originals, but this is one that that we're gonna work towards too. Okay. Once we got the title, and then yeah, fuck yeah. Right on. Right on. So cool. Oh, well, here we go. Uh, this is the uh, the new single called Goddess that you guys are really yeah. excited about. Yeah. This Debut is single. this is your guys' baby. What can we know about this one? Um, I wrote this song. I was like mouthing the pieces. Like I wrote this like a year ago. I wrote this a year ago, and I was just like down the street. I was having like kind of like um, I just got off like kind of like uh, my third year anniversary with my uh, now fiance. I was just like thinking is like as much as like bullshit that i've been through in my whole life i was just like thinking that she's been the big supporter in my life and mm-hmm. like believe in the dream and kind of like stuck in there so i was just like you know what 
like um just like just thinking about just kind of like uh just taking it all in so okay. i was just like you know as i was driving on the street and driving on the freeway the um the 210 over here just like window down in my beat up van that thankfully i don't drive no more <laughs> <laughs> um i was just thinking i just started singing some melodies and i was like you know what this, this kind of fits mm-hmm. so i just pulled my phone out just started you know um, recording and mouthing the guitar parts and what I think that the drums were going to be and what I think me not being a, the band member that knows how to play any of these instruments, yeah, yeah. Right, right. you know, that we kind of like, you know, I, I'm going to put at least kind of formulate what's in my head and and then give it to, you know, to Damien over here and like maybe he can make sense of it all. Mm-hmm. You know, so I wrote the lyrics and wrote the melody and helped out with a bit of the guitars and a lot of stuff and he he's the one that you know put it all together for me hmm. and after you know uh, a year of kind of like figuring it different out different versions and shit yeah mm-hmm. different versions fine tuning it and trying to figure yeah. out what the chorus is going to be and all the things like that um trying to f- finally figure it out so this this is goddess dedicated to my fiance all right mm-hmm. on. let's take a listen yes.
God damn. Damn. This is one you guys perform live? Yeah, we're going to do it uh, next Saturday. Yeah. I can't wait to see so. this live. Yeah, this, this is a freaking dope song. Dude. When, you, when you sent it to me the first time, I was like, oh, man, this is this is good. It really does take me to that place where you get to when you listen to Deftones, Tool, Perfect, Perfect Circle. Perfect Circle, yeah. I was about to say, it. like, yeah. oh, man, you could feel all of those influences in this song. Like, it's just you just get lost in it. It's good. I Thanks, like it. Man, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's awesome. Cool, awesome shit. Cool, cool. Yeah, I'm glad we were able to premiere it on the show, dude. Uh, it's Thank it's, it's fucking dope, dude. Out, yeah, yeah abs- absolutely, yeah. dude. I- I'm excited to have you guys close out Foo Bar Fest. It's going to be a good time. And uh, is there anything else that we should know about uh, your performance that day? A- any other surprises that we can uh, look forward to or anything like Pyrotechnics that? Pyrotechnics going to be biting uh, off any bad heads. Or... Or... No, it's going to be no, a good no set. Clowns, no should... clowns. No clowns. No clowns. <laughs> No clowns. No midgets. Sorry. No midgets. Oh, please <laughs> bring a clown. I, I swear to God, if a clown shows yeah. up, I'm walking out. Um, I just, uh, I it's guess. The best of any scenario. Right? No, it's going to be a good show. Um, high energy. So uh, just our, our job is just to stay sober enough to, you know, get there. Uh, oh, yeah. That <laughs> yeah. won't be an easy feat. Yeah, That's it will right. not be. Yeah. Well, yeah. It'll be a marathon. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's awesome, man, to be able to close <laughs> it out and headline it. So thank you guys. I appreciate you guys having us. And oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm stoked to play with the Falling Electric. So it's fucking cool. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a fun time, dude. It's yeah. going to be really, really fun. Where can we find you guys uh, again on the interwebs? Wolvesinside.com or Instagram. We are Wolves Inside. Right on. Cool, cool. cool. All right. Well, um, <clears throat> we promised something in the last episode. That and we're, we're going to deliver? Be, and we're actually going to deliver on this, Josh. What? Check us out. It's a lie. <laughs> but man, I have a list of brackets that I'm holding right here. And these guys, Steph and Josie over here, did some work. I am seeing yeah. four full brackets, yeah. fully filled out. Like I can't, I, I cannot. I'm stunned. They did a lot of side work on this. The best theme <laughs> songs of all time. You guys ready? Yeah. All right. <laughs> The Food Bar Show presents the best theme songs of all time. All right, well, all right, enough of that effect. Keep, keep that on the whole time. The, the whole time, yeah, yeah. No, Mr. No, announcer, no. man. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I think, uh, like I stated in the previous episode, we're going to be doing uh, brackets for TV, music, video games. And ads slash jingles. Those are the four main leagues that are going to be going head to head with each other, all in one bracket to come to the best theme song of all time. No no clapping. What's first? (laughs) What we got here? Well, today we're going to be focusing only on the TV league. Oh, okay. The television league. So, out of this particular league, there are four main divisions comedy, drama, and action, sci fi, horror. And kids in education. Okay. Yeah, and, and kids in education is a pretty strong one, man. When oh, we, damn. Uh, when, when we get to it. It's you got to be catchy as fuck for kids, man. Oh, okay. yeah. You need their attention. Oh, yeah, that's true. That yes, is sir. true. Yes, sir. So what are the rules here? Uh, so, I mean, the, the rule, I, I have them all in my head. I didn't really list them down yet. I'm kind of hoping that the, the foo is just going to troll it and it'll make for some funny situations. Let's oh, do this. Nice. <laughs> if you guys Perfect. have a question, please ask. I've already thought about every possible scenario. Okay. Like, when okay. does this end? <laughs> it'll, uh, it'll, it. I mean, this, this is a constant battle. Or this what? whole thing is gonna probably go down for the next six months of the podcast. Oh, oh damn! <laughs> it's a lot of fucking songs. All right, in here. looks like we don't got to do a lot of work. Now on we're only gonna while. touch on uh, two pairings for every division. So okay. uh, we're only gonna go head to head, and you guys, Wolves and Side, you guys can help us vote. Okay. We're gonna start off with the comedy section of the TV league. Okay. So these are the first, and I've randomized them all. There was no rhyme or reason onto. Which ones were to go head to head, but here is number one. Making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Taking a break from <laughs> all oh. your worries. Show what help you Unmistakable, lie. right? Oh, come it's on. The theme song to cheers. Like to get, get away. This is my favorite. Wait. All those nights when you've got no lights. Check is in the mail. Well, we gotta get to yeah, the chorus. We gotta get to, we the, gotta chorus. Get to the chorus. I didn't realize this. Well, and your third fiance didn't show. Oh, ouch. Sometimes you wanna go where everybody knows your name. And they're always glad you came. You wanna be where you can see. Troubles are all the same You wanna be where everybody knows 
What's your name? Oh, that's cheers. a strong fucking so clean. Damn, so that's number one? That's the first one? You're that's start- the first one. Yeah, we're starting off It's strong. all randomized, I so there's know. no rhyme or reason here. But this is who, this the, is the other song it's going that is going again. up against. Oh, man. This is going to be tough. Will you guys let me know? Okay. No. When oh. I wake up in the morning and the long gets out of one, I don't think I'll ever make it on time. Say by the by the time I Say get by the morning, yeah. I give myself a look on the Well, that's iconic. Damn it. It's our fucking childhood. Damn. <laughs> We're having two icons go down. One of these icons is going down the first bout. What do you guys <sighs> think? Oh, I already made the, my decision. Are we, are we taking the, the tally right now? We're taking the tally now. This is going to yeah. be the decider of who goes oh. of which one of these wins. It's it's a, it's a knockout round. All right. Oh, damn. Okay. Who goes first, me? Yeah, yeah. Let's start with you, Foo. Cheers. Cheers? Cheers. Oh, damn. All right, I'll go next. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go with Cheers. Cheers is just so Ooh. timeless. So timeless. I'm going to go with Cheers as well. Oh. I mean, you guys are mathematically eliminated, but, but what do you guys think? Let's see what you guys <laughs> well, we, value, we value your opinion. It doesn't fucking matter. I, just wanna, uh, um, I say it by the bow for me. I don't know. If okay. I, I, I like that song. What about you, Nucio? Cheers, because on uh, the first time I heard it was not on the show that was originally on. It was on Bill Nye, the Sandy Sky. Yeah. Was, oh, was shit. Little, and I seen the dinosaurs, and I'm in love with dinosaurs. So I was like, <laughs> what are we all? In the background, and I was, I was like, that song, I love it. <laughs> yeah, that oh, dude. Save right. by, Saved by the Bell did not have a stand a chance against All Cheers. All right, looks like Cheers uh, wins the round. Oh. Probably a heavy hitter too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. All right, that's a good start. That's see, a good start. See, if Saved by the Bell went went against an, any other show, I'm sure we probably would have beat him out. Mm-hmm. But Cheers, goddamn, damn, that was a good start. All right, thanks. <laughs> Let's see here. We're on to the drama and action. Oh, so uh, we're going to do one of each division One of today. each division okay, for okay. today. In right. the television Got you. Got you. Uh, league. Got, Got you. you. All right. So uh, number one on the drama and action is... <laughs> Hawaii Five-O. <laughs> And so on and so and forth. And so forth, yeah. I mean, but it's just, iconic. Yeah, you, it is. You, know, you, you hear that that music and it just gets you in a good mood. You just can't help but buy And the show is back on CBS these yeah. days with uh, with new act. Uh, what's his name from Lost? It's, Jin Fu? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I don't know what his name is, but... I... Eh, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> and this iconic song is going up against... Oh... Game oh, over, game dude. Over. No, no contest. Just, no contest. Give it a lot in order, man. Oh, the order is it unanimous? Oh, no. Man. Come on. You put any intro to Law and Order, <laughs> you're, you're fucking gold. Like, what was that, that community episode where they did a Law and Order spoof on it? Like, it was oh, the, yeah. it was that one was of the so best good. episodes. I just remember watching Ted, too. Or is it where they fucking had yeah. that, talking and shit? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, fucking, the Bears fucking singing the song. Yeah. <laughs> Sick. Oh, All right. Okay. Well, that was an easy one. That was an easy All one, right. too. There. Now, this, one, this one's going to be oddly satisfying for you two nerds right here. Yeah. The, the Foo and Josh. Now, again, I did not plan on these two going up against each other. It's okay. random. We believe you, sort it, it's of. It's random. <laughs> kind <laughs> sort of. of. But this is Slightly going. Credible. This is going under the sci-fi and horror division. Oh, and it, it was one of those things where I had to place anime songs somewhere. And no, it, I think that's a good category for some anime because a lot. If you guys watch a lot of anime, a lot of them are fucking scary. Yeah, they got some horror and, aspects and these, to it. And these two in particular definitely have a sci-fi component about them. Yes. So I figured this would be the best place to put them mm-hmm. because I did not want to count them out of the running by by no by no means. But this one is going to be strong. Yeah. The whole song builds yeah. the entire time. It does. 
It does. Well, Naruto had to be Oh, dude, yeah, dude, a lot of anime. A lot of anime is very metal influenced. Yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah. One Punch Man is like this heavily metal. This influence. show is metal, dude. Straight up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I now, highly recommend you guys. One watch thing that. I want to make sure that everybody's aware of since we're now kind of getting into it here is that please do not judge the song based on the, the show. The show. It's got to be based on a memorability and musical content. I understood. So yeah. that that, you know, th- this is it's, it's an awesome it's an awesome song, but when you put it up against this motherfucker right here. Cowboy Bebop. That bass, dude. Gets you every time. I fucking hear this. The string slapping. I think it's time to blow this thing. Get everybody <laughs> stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, let's jam. Damn, this is actually a close one. What you guys think? We'll go around the room. I don't think it's going to be unanimous this time around. I don't think so either. Josh, lead the way. Okay, I'll go first. So, uh, you know, on this one, I think I'm going to have to go Cowboy Bebop. I, I, I do like how it's very creative, jazzy. Jazzy sleuthy feel, you know, like yeah. how you would feel in the old school, old school style. I like it. I like Cowboy Bebop. And ironically, it takes place in space. <laughs> so, I mean, with this music, it, that, that, that's my vote. Cowboy <laughs> Bebop. Well, Damien? The second one. Cowboy, Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. All right. What you got? I have to go Naruto. Dude, metal aspect. me too. Naruto. Love any uh, was, any anime shows with, with rock and heavy guitar. See, it was yeah. close for me because I was really close to picking Naruto, but... It's that build in Naruto, like that initial, how it initially starts. Too where it's, long. it's not, yeah, it's a little too long. It, it, the build takes a little too long to get to the metal aspect. But I see what they're doing because it, the, the first parts mostly fit the show. You know, the whole ninja aspect and everything. Mm-hmm. But I think Be- Cowboy Bebop just, boom, you jump in, yeah, hear that right, bass right slapping and rattling, man. It's fucking dope. Cool. Love it. Yeah. All right. Well, I think uh, Cowboy Bebop takes this round. All right, so going on to the final round for today, the kids and education <laughs> division. All right, so interesting. And, and, and this is this is very Arthur. Uh, this is Arthur. very appropriate. Arthur, uh, <laughs> Arthur, <laughs> <laughs> Nutsu, reading Rainbow. Nutsu, you freaking called it, man. Yeah, so, uh, no. Bill Nye, the science guy. Oh, no. Bill, 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 <laughs> science. He's shredding in the background. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys putting uh, this? this, this, this I'm feeling Bill was the one. This is when '90s theme songs were fucking on point. Yeah. I remember in high school when uh, my bio- my biology uh, teacher was like, "We're gonna watch one of th- a couple of these this week," and I'd be like. Fuck yes! Yeah. Finally, I, I used to rent build- them at the library and bring them to her. And be like, "Here's all his videos. <laughs> We're watching them this We're watching week." Them <laughs> <the> guy's <laughs> dope. He was ahead of his time back then. Oh, sure. dude, I learned so much from. But uh, this is one that's really near and dear to my heart. Check this next one out. See if you remember it. Where you guys got this round at? So uh, this is a tough we'll go one. Go with Nuncio. You start. You start this one. Gonna, you already know it's Bill Nye. It's Bill Nye. Science guy. Yeah. He's still putting on to this day. <laughs> yeah. Same. Yeah. Foo. Bill Same. Nye. Bill yeah. Nye. Bill Nye. All the way on my part. Where you at, Damon? Bill Nye. All right. Yeah. It's unanimous, dude. Bill Nye. Bill Nye. The science guy takes it. He's I mean, like even near to his heart. He's it, like, I know Bill Nye. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I mean, Doug. Doug just gives you that heartwarming feel when you when you listen to that theme song again, but. God damn, Bill Nye the science guy. Bill Nye gets you, you fucking rock. hyped for the show. Yeah, dude. yeah. yeah. yeah it was like 
<laughs> want to fucking do chemistry. Yeah. 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 Fucking biology. Go, go, go. 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 We're going to make, fucking, yeah. we're gonna yeah. make yeah. crystal yeah. meth. Dude, I see like some hardcore rock dudes like in the corner. Bill. 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 He's wearing a bow tie all Yeah. He's like, wait, whoa. What the fuck? Fucking halftime breakdown and shit. All right. Well, you guys got a good taste of it. Oh, dude. I'm excited to keep going with this on every single episode. This is going to be hours of content. That's a good segment. Yeah. That, that was a great four uh, four battles. Yeah, man, oh, yeah. I can't wait for the next round. I think the next one we're gonna deal with movies. Oh, fuck! So movies. that's gonna be exciting. <sighs> okay, all right, cool. guys. Well, that was this edition of the best theme songs of all time. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. That was oddly satisfying. Yeah, that was very satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to post these brackets up so just so everybody knows what we're dealing with. And, you know, as we go, I'll we'll keep posting the results so that, you know, everybody can be, uh, you know, kept in the loop. Kept in the loop as we go with Love this. It. But uh, it's going to be good times, man. And uh, I-, I can't thank you guys enough for being on the show today. So, no, uh, thank you guys. So, you know, it means a lot. So, uh, we'll be back whenever you guys have us back. So, oh, yeah. it's a fucking cool show. What do you EP, guys are doing? EP. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, definitely. We have that EP. I, I expect, nay, demand. That you guys return. Yeah. Yes. 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 So we'll come with we'll on, premiere yeah. your EP. For my if you fifth like. time. <laughs> we'll come with more more drinks. So. Oh, <laughs> please. please. I, I'm already buzzed off of this. Dude, that, that shit was good. Spike yeah, it hits, drink huh? here. Yeah, it cool. does hit, man. I, Summertime. It hit me like halfway. Like I was just like, oh, there we go. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> a wild so Thank you guys again. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, no Wolves problem. inside, everybody. Thanks again for being on the show. And thank Thanks. you all very much for listening into the Food Bar Show. Thank you for downloading the pod on your favorite podcast app. Subscribing and telling a friend like a champ. You can always reach us at Fubar Show. That's F W Bar Show dot com and F W Bar Show is our handle on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram. Check us out. Drop us a line, and we'll food up like a couple of foods. <laughs> I've been Jose. I've been Josh. I've been the food. And for the Wolves inside, Damian and Nuccio signing off, saying, "Don't be a dick."